My ex-boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend and left me to go pursue her. And now, several years later, they are begging me to be a part of their wedding party. And despite the fact that I've told them no numerous times, I am being inundated with phone calls and text messages from everybody, demanding that I forgive my cheating ex-boyfriend and show up to their wedding anyways. Here's what happened. Okay, so three years ago, my boyfriend of about one and a half years, who we will call Josh for the sake of the story, broke up with me because he had feelings for my best friend who we will call Anna. We hung out a lot and they said that they eventually developed feelings for one another. They admitted that Josh had been cheating on me and they made a fool out of me. They made me think that everything was okay when it really was not. If they admitted it at the time, I would have tried to be more understanding and tried to support them. But they chose to lie. So I cut them both off. I focused on school and found a job with a really good income. Josh and Anna tried to reach out to me at first, telling me that they still wanted to be friends, but I blocked them. And now I'm living in the town next to our hometown. I got a wonderful job opportunity, so I moved. But I like that I was still close enough to visit my parents and other relatives. Anyways, about a month ago, I heard about their wedding from a mutual friend. It didn't really bother me anymore, so I just went about my life. But about a week ago, I received a message from Anna telling me that she and Josh were getting married and that they would like me to be a part of their wedding party. I replied by saying congratulations, but no thank you. I had no feelings for for Josh anymore and I'm even seeing someone else but I don't want to celebrate the wedding of two people who betrayed me but even though I gave my response they were insistent. Josh also messaged me via a different number and some of my friends also tried to convince me to come to the wedding but I firmly said no. Even my mom called me asking if I was going and when I said no she sounded disappointed but she didn't push it and honestly this is all just so weird to me. Why would you want your ex-girlfriend or ex-best friend you know know, the girl you cheated on, be a part of your wedding. Well, the day before yesterday, Anna's parents called me telling me that they miss me and really hope I could go to the wedding. But once again, I firmly said that I would not be going. It was at this moment that Anna's mom berated me, saying that I should let bygones be bygones and that I should be happy for her daughter. I then asked her if I cheated with Anna's boyfriend and then invited her to the wedding, would she convince Anna to go? Well, when I asked this question, she had no answer to this and actually ended up hanging up on me. Now at this point, it's gotten quite out of hand because I'm receiving more than 30 phone calls and text messages a day from their friends and family about this wedding. So honestly, right now things are really hard and I seriously don't know what to do. Before we go any further, the original poster actually has an update for us. Here's what they had to say. I want to start off by saying thank you so much for all of the advice. I didn't think that this would get so much attention. I just want to clarify a few things that I read about in the comments, though I'm very sorry that I haven't read all of them. First of all, my mom is not going to the wedding, but I think she wants to go, and that's why she was asking me if I was going, and I plan on talking to her after work. Also, Anna messaged me with a different number, and I still have no idea how she got my number. Also, my hometown is a small town, and most of our friends did know that I was cheated on, and that's why this all seems so weird to me. I did block the people who were very insistent, including the new numbers of Anna, her mother, and Josh. I also keep blocking the people that text me about the wedding, but new numbers just keep popping up, which makes it more weird that people are actually making an effort to get new numbers just so I would attend my ex's wedding. I'm going to talk to a close friend who still lives in my hometown, and she hates Anna for what she did to me, and she may know what's going on, because right now things are definitely out of control. Wow, this is crazy because this is so inappropriate. Josh and Anna, first of all, are terrible people because they were involved in cheating, and they basically ruined a good thing in your life. So for that reason alone, you should not feel obligated to go to that wedding at all. And the fact that everyone is so insistent and they're trying to be like, oh, come on, just let it go. He only cheated on you. What's the big deal? Like, are you kidding me right now? There's no way I would ever go to that wedding. And I love the fact that you turned this right back at Anna's mom and you proved your point and basically showed exactly how insane all of this is. It's also so concerning and disappointing that everyone is so obsessed with you going to this wedding. Like after receiving 30 calls and text messages and just always being bothered about this, I don't blame you for blocking people and being like, no, I'm not going to this crap. And seriously, why should you? Just so they can rub it in your face in some kind of way? Like they clearly are just trying to drag you back to a place where you did not feel good about yourself. This just doesn't sound like a good idea at all. So truly, I think you're doing the right thing by cutting these people off and choosing to block them instead of entertaining any of this garbage. Because the way they're acting, in my opinion, is completely unacceptable. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it 
it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for telling my husband that I think his brother and wife are bad parents for always trying to make us watch their kids 24-7 whenever we come up and visit them? Because right now, he's upset with me for what I said. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So whenever I'm visiting my in-laws, maybe three to four times a year, we stay at my brother-in-law's house because they have an extra bedroom. And also, they insist that we stay with them. My brother-in-law and his wife expect near 24-7 babysitting because I'm not working during these trips. They leave my niece with me and start asking and telling me to do things. Stuff like, can I feed her? Why doesn't she read a book with me? And not to let her watch any TV. They basically just disappear into their own worlds the whole day as one of them goes to work and the other one works from home. Now, I don't mind helping out for a few hours here and there, but being expected to just watch her the whole day during the entire vacation, if I don't have plans outside of the house, seems excessive to me, and I find myself growing very resentful. I honestly don't understand what they do when I'm not around, as they don't have a babysitter normally. Whenever I express that I'm tired or try to get away for some rest, they end up commenting later in a joking way how me and my husband should reconsider having kids in the future since we get tired so easily, or that we should watch my niece for a longer period of time, namely weeks at a time, before ever seriously considering a child. Now these comments rub me the wrong way and seem so inappropriate to me because obviously having a child is a lot of work. But just because I don't want to watch their child 24-7 doesn't mean that they can say such rude things to me. I've complained to my husband a few times, but he seems to think that this is all normal and that this level of expectation for babysitting is also totally normal and part of the culture as South Asian. However, I'm not really sure if this is the case because they tried basically the same thing with their other sibling who lives in the same city as them to try and get them to schedule babysitting their kid for one to two weekends every month and they obviously refused which led to a small fight. Well, recently I got so annoyed at their behavior over the past few trips, especially leaving their child with me and my husband when at the time we had been feeling very unwell and very sick that I told my husband that I don't like his brother and I think that him and his wife are extremely self-centered and they are demanding people who are bad parents because they are always trying to pawn their kid off on other people. This obviously started a huge fight as my husband feels very close to his brother. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, I don't think you're the jerk because I completely understand where you're coming from. When you go to these trips to see your in-laws, you're not there to babysit. I can't stand when people try that and they're like, oh wow, if you can't handle this, then you can't handle for a second being a parent. And it's like, wait a second, why is this suddenly some kind of rite of passage just to have a kid of my own? Just because you're too lazy to watch your kid doesn't mean that I'm going to babysit them for the entire day, let alone for weeks at a time. Like, that is crazy talk. So no, I don't think you're the jerk at all, and I think you have it right. Your in-laws were very self-centered, and in my opinion, I think they are completely out of line. My husband and I's roommate is an absolute nightmare to live with, as he is constantly late on his rent, while also is never paying for anything associated with the house. And at this point, we seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, for a bit of background, I moved in a year ago with my boyfriend, and the both of us are 22 years old. His friend, who is a 26 year old male was supposed to stay with my boyfriend for a few months until he got on his feet. Well, he never left and until my boyfriend told him six months in, he wasn't paying for rent, groceries, or utilities. Now, a bit about this friend. He's been sheltered his entire life and that basically means that everyone around him struggled but they also made sure that he was always covered and always good and he basically had it really good compared to his siblings growing up. And this is a good thing, having family come together to make sure you have a good upbringing but unfortunately, this made him super entitled and he feels that everyone has to cater to him and his lifestyle. Now, the roommate goes back home to another state and did a hard illegal substance. He failed a UA test and got 45 days extra duty. So, he works long hours in the military but ends up finding loopholes because he was higher up. Now, there are three weeks of arranged pay that he has not paid me for me taking care of his dog when he went on a trip to Thailand. And this is because his pay got docked after he failed the substance test. Now, he asked me to help with his dog, and I said, sure, I'll do what I can, but I told him, you've got to help out if you're home, and he said that he agreed. We have cameras, and I noticed the roommate would be home, but when I take our dog out, he would go to the bathroom for very long and shake while doing so. So, I asked him, and he said he took him out. Well, the dog is still doing this, so I said to him, are you sure? And he said to me, well, I can't find my dog's harness in my room for the past few days. I've been borrowing your dog's harness and just taking my dog out because it's a lot of work to walk up and
went down the stairs. And it's like, what are you talking about? It's half a flight of stairs. Then the roommate is late on rent and says to me, oh, I'll get the money next week. And my boyfriend then reminds him and he says, oh, we don't get paid till one more week. I'm broke right now. Do you like 100% need the money? I can dip into my savings if you need it. And I'm thinking in my head, what is going on? This is rent money. I complained about his dog's behavior issues because he expects me to take care of her if he goes on nine months of deployment. And I texted him back saying, ask your friends or family or your girlfriend because I'm not watching her all the time. She is an untrained dog. He texted back by saying, I'll pay for the classes, but you have to drive her. And then he sends me a link to a place that's literally an hour and a half away. I sent him a message back and said, you are definitely tripping. You need to figure out arrangements for where she's going to stay because either she's going to be boarding up or it's going to be with someone you know. He also complained to a mutual friend that he pays for half the groceries and then tries to act like he doesn't know where his half of the groceries go because there's no food in the house. But here's the thing. He hasn't paid half since I moved in. I'm the one literally tallying up what he asks us to buy for him and I send it in the group text message. We also don't touch his food, which by the way, his food is just a bunch of chicken nuggets and corn dogs. We buy vegetables and meat and he still eats what we buy for ourselves. On top of that, he has not been asked to pay for what we buy for him for like three months and that's because he's been supposedly struggling with money but instead he's just buying a lot of dumb expensive stuff so right now me and my boyfriend are at a complete loss and we seriously don't know what to do yeah this roommate needs to become a former roommate very quickly this seems like a nightmare to deal with here you have somebody who is clearly taking advantage of your kindness and refuses to pay for rent like seriously guys he's not paying rent if that's not a bigger clue that this guy's gotta go then I don't know what is and the fact that he's complaining to other people and like making stuff up, that would drive me crazy because you're literally like paying for his entire life and he's living rent free and you guys are letting it happen. So in my opinion, I think it's time for him to go. If I was in your shoes, I would start that process immediately because this does not sound like a healthy living environment in the slightest. Am I the jerk for canceling our streaming services so that we could hire a housekeeper to take care of our house? Because right now my husband is furious with me and at this point I don't know what to do. So my husband husband and I just welcomed our first baby almost three months ago. Understandably, it has been a huge adjustment for the both of us. She is still not sleeping through the night and we're both back to work full time. We have always split the household responsibilities 50-50. We just help where needed and it's always worked out well. Lately though, my husband has been doing the chores terribly and I've had to come behind him to fix things or clean them again. For example, he cleaned the bottles the other night and they were cleaned so poorly that I had to do them all over again. He dropped some pump parts down the disposal and then ran it and it just ruined them. There have been several pieces of clothing that he didn't clean after a blowout that are also now completely ruined. There are many more instances like this and I have confronted him a few times letting him know that we all make mistakes and I know we are both tired but it feels like he's not even trying to do these things well. He just keeps saying he's so tired and is having a hard time working and taking care of the house and the baby and I do sympathize with this as I'm also working, pumping, recovering and taking care of the house and the baby. The final straw for me was when he told me to go to sleep and he would put up the milk that I just pumped and finish all the dishes. Now I was so grateful until I got up and realized the milk had been sitting on the counter and at this point was no good anymore. He said he was sorry and he put on a show to relax for a bit before doing the dishes and then just fell asleep. So the next day I decided to cancel all of our streaming services, PlayStation Plus and our theme park passes in order to hire a housekeeper. I figured if he's too tired to do basic household chores then a housekeeper is necessary. If he is too tired to put the milk up, then he's too tired to play video games or for us to go to a theme park. We still have cable and the PlayStation games and can do other activities outside of local theme parks. Well, when he found out about this, he blew up at me and said I had no right in doing that and now he is absolutely furious. Now, I thought I was doing us a favor so we could get more sleep and not worry about household chores. So am I the jerk for canceling things in the way that I did? What should I do? Honestly, I kind of feel like everybody sucks in this scenario because you're husband absolutely should have put everything away and been more tidy around the house. But also, if you really wanted to cancel all these subscriptions just to afford like a housekeeper to help out, which is reasonable, then I think you definitely should have talked to him first and let him know, hey, this is the game plan. Don't get me wrong. I'm not excusing his behavior. But if my significant other was like, oh, yeah, I'm canceling all of this so we can get a housekeeper. You're clearly too tired to do anything. And that includes playing games. Like at that point, I would be like, oh, okay, you're doing this passive aggressively. I get it now because that's how this comes off. And I think some simple communication could have gone a long way because right now this kind of makes both of you look incredibly petty and I personally think that this could have been handled a lot better. Every single
single restaurant I've ever worked for has always fallen into the trap of hiring way too many servers. And after doing this for a while, I can honestly say that it is incredibly exhausting. So you ever wonder why your favorite server or bartender left a good job? Well, I've worked for several restaurants and every single one I've worked at has eventually fallen into the trap I'm about to describe. Now, of course, many businesses have trouble getting good and reliable people and restaurants are no exception. But then this happens. A restaurant is finally doing well and has a staff that gets along, is good at their jobs and likes their jobs. Plus, they provide great service. But most importantly for the staff, people are making money. Well, then the unthinkable happens. The restaurant starts to get busier. There are more customers. And this honestly really should be a good thing. But unfortunately for the servers, it can be a sign to start looking for another job. And here's the reason why. Most people understand that being busier means that it takes longer to get things. And most customers understand this overall. Nobody reasonable expects to go into a restaurant or movie theater on a Friday night and have things go as smoothly as they would on like a Monday afternoon, for example. But management wants everyone to have perfect service all the time. So they decide to hire more people, but they almost always over hire. And why not? If servers are only $2.13 an hour, labor cost for management is next to nothing. So your coworker, Susie the server, who had been used to working with a staff of five, comes in for her next shift and there are now 10 servers. Business has increased maybe 10 to 20%, but her tables have been reduced by 50%. Her pay is cut in half for doing well and she becomes angry and frustrated. And the new hires have the same problem. They've been told how much people make there, but then they work these overstaffed shifts and it feels like they've been lied to. So then they quit pretty fast as well and the veterans are looking for other jobs. Three months later, you are now back to the original size of the staff and you've gone through a lot of people. Your veterans are gone and service has dropped. And so as a result, your customers start going elsewhere. It's kind of funny that tip culture promotes the exact opposite problem of most other jobs. Other businesses don't hire more because it costs the company, but restaurants over hire because it costs them literally nothing. And it just pulls money away from their current staff and literally will just ruin their entire business. Yeah, that's a really good insight. And I really wanted to share that because I have personally experienced that. It is so frustrating, especially in the service industry and like a restaurant of some kind. When you walk in and literally the staff has doubled, you have people there who were not there like a week ago and you're now getting less tables and less money. And it's one of the many reasons why being a server is so difficult because sure, the customers can be super entitled and very hard to deal with. But sometimes even worse than that is management. They only see dollar signs attached to your hard work. And so they hire more people to basically dilute the customer service. So what the original poster is saying is completely true. And in my opinion, it's one of the most frustrating things you can ever see as a server. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my daughter's university? All because I don't like the degree she wants to go for. Because right now my daughter and wife are very mad at me. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so my wife and I have three children. My eldest child already has a job while the middle is in university and the youngest is in her final year of high school. Because my daughter will be going to university soon, we had to sit down about what she was going to do. Up until this point, I left my wife to discuss this with my daughter because she is better with these things and she is closer to my daughter. Anyways, the issue came when my daughter said that she was intending to do a degree in fine arts and design. And I was surprised, but I let her talk her piece. She told me about her love for art and animation and she would love to turn her passion into a career. After she said everything she wanted to say, I asked her to elaborate on the finer details and I could see that she wasn't thinking about what she would do after university. So I told her that this is a terrible idea and she should rethink what she wants to do. And I left the table assuming my wife would talk her into something more reasonable. Well, fast forward a month and we are back to having the conversation again. And this time she was more certain than ever about doing her degree in fine arts. I was a bit frustrated because I was expecting my wife to talk her out of it, but my wife was supporting her and trying to convince me about the positives to it. Well, I could see that I was fighting a losing battle. So I flat out told them that I would not pay for university if she would just waste my money on this degree. Now, at this point, they both got very mad, pointing out how I had paid for my previous children without question, but I pointed out that I never had to worry about them finding a job and that we are not in a first world country like people in Europe or North America. There is no market for artists where we live and the unemployment rate is already ridiculously high. I told her that I don't care what she does as long as it will lead to employment and then I just left. Well, my daughter told her siblings and while my son agrees with me, my eldest daughter says I should allow her the chance to do what she loves and now it looks like I have favoritism. So honestly, what do I do here? Am I the jerk for the way that I handled this? 
What should I do? Yeah, I'm gonna say you're definitely the jerk here, because for starters, you clearly don't know your daughter, but also because it seems like you're holding her future education over her head, all quite literally right before she graduates. Like, that is really toxic, and that is so myopic. Like, how do you not know your daughter where you would know she's into this kind of stuff? Like, you said it yourself, you left your wife to discuss these things with your daughter because she knows her better. But it's like, okay, well, why don't you know her better? And your argument of saying, oh, I don't live in a first world country, there's no job market for that, and sure, it might be true if she plans on living in the country she's from, but you don't know the opportunity she could have at this school to get a job somewhere else. This could literally be her opportunity to network and find those people that can help her find a job elsewhere. Her going to university for this is her opportunity to network and find people who are in the industry. So for you to sit there and be like, no, you're not going to do this. I'm not going to pay for this. Like that really is super selfish and it really is unfair because you're literally not even letting her try to see if this is something she's interested in. Most people switch their major like five different times. She could easily get into this and be like, wait, okay, I don't want to do this. Let me switch things up. But if you don't even let her try, then seriously, what's there to learn? So yes, I do think you are the jerk here because I think the demands you're making of your daughter right now, in my opinion, are completely unreasonable. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.